In this video, we will be talking about angular momentum or angular motion. So maybe to f refresh your memories, what we have here, we have a collection of particles, m, i, m, j, and so on. There are n particles moving around. The center of mass is RC. And here we have an, define an arbitrary point P that we'll be using a lot to work with motion, um, angular motion of the system. So uh, let me see anything needs to be defined. So let's first define angular momentum. Angular momentum is defined about some point. So I have angular momentum. Let's for now look at the simplest case, fixed point O. So the definition of angular momentum, we usually use the term H. It's also a, a vector quantity. It is um, for a particle. Let's do it this way. Is Ri where the point is cross its linear momentum r dot i so essentially it is the moment of linear momentum about that point and for the whole system h o we can add them together summation over i of all r i cross m i r dot i so this is angular momentum of the whole system about a fixed point O. We can also write it about some arbitrary point, arbitrary point P that I have shown here. So when we are, look, when we are looking at another point, we have to look at relative motion. So in this case, P, the angular, oh uh, no, not equal. P H about P is the summation of rho i plus m i rho dot i. So notice that I'm looking this relative position rho i as opposed to the absolute position r i. And what it means is, well, the difference between the two, this one is, well, not all of it. Let's do this. This bit is absolute. Absolute. Velocity. This one is relative velocity relative to point p so the good thing is well these are the definition of angular momentum F from any perspective from any point we are looking at the the system we have to look at the the motion relative to that point so when P could be at any point with any more any kind of motion it doesn't have to be fixed but if if P is fixed which goes back to the condition of the first condition or P is the center of mass then this H of P doesn't matter if you look at the absolute velocity or um, relative velocity, it's all going to be the same. So, oh, oh, oh. Mi rho dot i or, so, uh, what did I write? No. Where is the rho i? Equals rho i cross mi 
row.i, but also it is equal to row i cross mi r i. So we can either look at the relative velocity and absolute or absolute velocity, but still we have to find the moment about that point p. So keep that in mind. And from here, one of the very specific points in a, in a body, especially during rotation. No, we also saw it in translation as well. Angular momentum about point C, the, the center of mass. So in this case, we can I can define. Um, let me see what is my notation. I can find the position of any point and call it a row i and in this case I'm going to put a superscript c to distinguish it from the point p. So I go momentum about center of mass, I can write it, it's the same thing, I'm just I'm rewriting it with a, with a slightly different notation to make sure it is considered about center of mass, rho i cross M I rho C I this dot. So it's summation over I. And this is a very useful form that we can use. So this is angular momentum about center of mass. Sometimes it is convenient. Sometimes it is convenient to um, look at motion relative to another point, relative to point P. For instance, it is easy to calculate the velocities of the particles about some arbitrary point P. So what we want to do is rewrite this h of c, h of c about center of mass using information of relative motion about another point, about another point p so why we want to write h of c about another point p so as we will see this h of c is very special and to write the equation of motion in the angular domain we kind of like to work uh, have the angular momentum we, we want to know it about center of mass and it's change about center of mass but sometimes we have easier time writing those numbers relative to another point P. So the quantity is still H of C, but written about um, using the information about another point. So um, to do this, let me write another piece of from the perspective of point P, the position of center of mass is, let's call it rho C. So what I can write is, let's see, rho, rho C I plus rho C is rho I. And I'm going to plug this into the top equation, then h of c equals summation over i of rho c, which is rho i minus rho i c cross m i, same thing. But taking the derivative, everything becomes derivative, so I have rho i dot minus rho c i dot 
and let me expand this so I have sum over i of rho i cross m i rho dot i plus summation of um, rho i cross well this is going to be negative minus um, let's see which one I'm doing here first for the sake of aesthetics now let's do this oh I do, 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 do. see summation of rho i cross m i rho dot c i and finally plus summation rho c i this cross m i rho c dot all right, so four terms, and we can look at them one by one. So rho i cross, this one we keep it as is, the first one. The second one, the, let's see, let me see what I'm doing here. Is my note correct? Where is wait wait a minute? No, that's something. Oh, I should no, that's why everything is messed up. So uh, I'm looking at rho i superscript c. So it is rho i minus rho c. C rho i minus rho c. Rho c. Okay, that's better. This one. Right, right. This is rho dot c. Okay, that makes more sense. First one remains the same. This one becomes c. This one becomes C, and these ones become C. Okay, good. So let's let's look at this now. So keep this as is. The first one. The second one. This row C is independent of I, so I can write it as row C cross summation of m i rho i and this one also rho c is here so i can write it as summation of rho i um m i rho i the whole thing cross Cross row C, I'm basically factoring out. And this one, both of these are um, just constant. So row C cross row C. Oh. No. This one we can't do much, can we? Yeah, I can write sum of mi rho c cross rho c rho dot c. This is also rho dot. 
This one also should be rolled out. Why am I doing this? Okay, that's better. Everything is rolled out. Good. All right. So row C cross row this there is essentially M I um, the velocity of center of mass. So uh, what is my notation? Rho dot C. And these two, one of them negative, one of them positive, they should cancel out. Or do they? So that one is zero. Oh, okay. No, this one is zero. And this one is row C again, which crossed by row C. Oh, no, okay. No, this is... This is not that, so this is M, sum of M I rho C times rho C, and that one, these two are equal, so they cancel out. So this cancels with that. And what I'm left with, so I'm just going to rewrite this, H C equals, uh, Sum of rho i cross m i rho dot i minus rho c cross why did I write m i? What am I doing today? m rho dot c So there, um, let's see, this one we saw it before, this is, um, let me just double check, I have everything correct. This is H of P. The angular momentum we had it up there h of p is rho i cross it's defined up here rho i cross m i rho dot i and we can keep that as is or if i want to rewrite it to look better angular momentum about p is angular momentum about c plus rho c Oh, that's it. So what it means is angular momentum about any arbitrary point, angular momentum about a point P equals angular momentum about center of mass plus then this term no, too long. Is the moment of linear momentum of center of mass about P. So if I want to know angular momentum about, of the body about a certain point, I can see how it is about center of mass and how the center of mass is moving relative to that point so that's what it is so sorry about a little um, hiccups in the middle so now we know we we know angular momentum about center of mass about um, another arbitrary point and how we can um, relate them together and in the next lecture in the next video we will see how those are related to forces and moments. All right, I'll see you then.